Okay, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm not going to interrupt lunch. I don't want to keep you from doing the most important thing, which is eating. But um, I got invited to do a lunch and learn, so I'm really pumped to be here. My name's Will, and I run a program in the city called Benchmark Program. And we have the gym space over at the CBW building, so which has been a growing thing for us. We've been trying to figure out how to unlock the doors to make sure that they're open for everybody, and we've had some back and forth. And, I want to use the gym, but I don't know how to get in there. And so hopefully today I can clear up a little bit of the, you know, those details and also offer up some cool little tips. Um, Kimberly asked me to come in just to kind of like the workplace wellness talk, which I'm sure you've heard in a variety of forms and fashions before, but I'll give you my take on it. Um, but my little bit of background is that Benchmark started as an outlet for kids in the city, men and women who aren't succeeding in other therapies and interventions, and they're generally older. So we deal with that risk youth who are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and above, who are maybe still in school, maybe not in school anymore, and we just can't figure out how to help them. Um, and in a world where we have a host of evidence-based practices that we throw at kids, um, sometimes it's nice and refreshing for them to just step into a space that happens to be a gym space where they can just meet positive people. And so we've experienced, and are continuing to experience neat outcomes that come out of just conversation with mentors, um, people who are there, that one person who will believe in them. And there's some cool research being done um, now that shows that sometimes just casual conversation um, can lead to the same impactful outcomes in the lives of virus teenagers um, that evidence-based practices and interventions lead to as well. So long story short, we have two gyms now, and Cap caught wind of what we were doing and said, we have some overlapping populations here. Can we do something together? And we thought about um, staging a gym in this room, and uh, that would have been a disaster because the kids would, it would have been very hard for the kids to come up in here and find us. But at the CBW building, we have that side door access in Lafayette Street, and kids who live in the southwest side of Lancaster walk past that street all the time, look in the windows, knock on the window, and we let them in. And you know, we have kids there who refer to us from juvenile probation. That's most of where our student body comes from, but it's fun to see kids walk in. And the neat thing about CAP um, and kind of the innovation, the innovative thinking was that let's have CAP as a community use this space all the time that Benchmark's not using it. Benchmark only uses it from five to eight o'clock at night. And right now we only have enough staff to do it on Thursday and Friday nights. So there's a ton of time when we've equipped that space with some really nice equipment um, and it's just sitting there. And so my hope is that we can together find a way that everyone can use it. So. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I have a very small team and, you know, we run around a lot, but I'm trying to find times when I can be over there and be available. So I have, I have some of my cards today and there's also some information that I can email out afterwards that has my contact information. And what I'm doing right now is I'm having uh, people who are interested in, I mean, what I'm really offering is free personal training. And I'm a personal trainer, that's how I make a living on the side, um, as I, I personal train at our other gym facility. but. I would like to offer that up without charge at the CBW building. And we have enough equipment there to make it really fun and exciting. And so it's mostly free weight stuff, but there's some machines as well. So we can bounce back and forth. And from my little background, I'm comfortable working with folks from all different health backgrounds and with certain injuries and needs and all that kind of good stuff. And some of my training has been in that, which is fun. But I want to make sure that I'm available. I can be there at lunch times all the time. That's a very easy time. And I can be there in evenings too, select evenings, as long as I know when folks would like to be there. So before I like get into anything, I just want to preface it by saying, I hope that this is an invitation for everyone to contact me if they'd like to get together at the gym sometime. Just do a walkthrough, or if you already have a personal trainer, you already work out, get a second perspective. Um, every personal trainer puts a spin on things. And I'd be happy to offer up my spin on whatever your workout plans are. Um, so that was, you know, that, that's, that's who I am, that's what we've created, and hopefully Benchmark as a program grows in this way so that we can create community, community space that's used during the day by community organizations and at night by our program. Um, and really we are the after after school program, so we don't need it during the day. Our kids are in school during the day or they're somewhere else during the day. So um, we can also do early morning workouts over there. I didn't say that. Yeah. If anyone likes to work out before work. The only thing that's tough is there's no showers over there. So you're going to get sweaty, you're going to come to work, or you're going to go to work, get sweaty, and then go back to work. It's tough. So we found that, I've found from a couple of cap employees who have reached out that evenings are the better time, and that's cool with me too. And for those who are interested, this is a cool thing we do. We have 
benchmark program students are interested in becoming employed. It's challenging for them at a lot of different levels, um, whether it's just a competency thing, they can't meet the requirements of the job, or they don't fit into any of the kind of workspaces that we've made available to them. For example, if I have a factory job where I know the employer and the employer wants X number of packers and shippers, um, a young lady in my program might not be interested in that. But we, through a series of kind of neat programming grants, have offered up this track to become a personal trainer. So I have a couple kids who are training to become personal trainers, and we have the resources to pay for their certification. So if you do work with me at Benchmark Program at the CBW building, it's likely that I'll have a tag along with me. And I believe they're a young lady or a young man who's working with me and going through the coursework, and they might direct an exercise, or they might suggest an exercise, and obviously I'll, you know, I'll make sure that that's appropriate, but it's really, there could be a cool opportunity for you to work with some of these kids in the city and give them an experience that's a power. Um, so, good stuff going on, and that, that's, that's the whole spiel, um, and the rest of the spiel that I want to begin is super sweet, because I've been through so many of these things myself, and some of them are very annoying, but the whole workplace wellness topic, um, everyone likes to take a spin on that, and there's a lot of folks out there that I work with in our spheres who have made a good bit of money going around and making presentations about their tactics, but I've found that Whatever you do, if you do it consistently, it will work. So if you consistently park your car in the parking lot and walk in every day and get to use the stairs instead of the elevator, it works. That might be the trick for you. For someone else, it might be that every time they take a phone call, they stand up, they talk, and they get an extension to their phone cord so they can walk around the office and talk on the phone. So I would offer up my suggestions today and hope that whatever you take from it, if you do it consistently, it will produce outcomes. So Looking at the room here, everyone's pretty healthy. That's a really good sign. I mean, sometimes I work with a population that doesn't have the capacity to sit down and stand up out of their chair comfortably. It looks like everyone here does, which is a gift. But part of the tricks that I'll present today are things that I've done and it worked for me and it worked for some of our clients. So I like to, I like to jump in by asking everyone, and this is part of proving my point, that while I'm talking, I'd ask that you try and keep your feet up off the ground the whole time. Oh. So it's neat. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll preface this by saying, by the end of the conversation, if I get my five to ten minutes, most people have their feet on the ground again. It's super, and it's a little, it's a little bit tough to balance, because when your feet go up, your um, center of gravity goes forward and you lean forward. But I've, I've challenged myself when I'm writing emails to keep my feet up off the ground. So if I write an email, I keep my feet off the ground. I hold it there for as long as I can. And generally, I keep my emails shorter, and I get a little bit of a, I get a little bit of a leg burn. So the other, the other basic thing that works: stand up as much as you can when you're in your office. Um, standing desks are tough. Standing desks are tough because you can't stand all day like that. You can't stand for eight hours. Even if you have one of those, you know, at the grocery store, the grocers have the um, padded mats on the floor that they stand on that help support um, their feet. Even if you have one of those, it's hard to stand all day. But there's some cool stuff, and again, this, this, is, not, this is not important, but there's cool desks that, the, there's a platform on the desk that you can actually wind up and sit down. So most of us don't have those. I don't have one of those. Um, but people who do that actively stand up and sit down throughout the day, which is really cool. So tip number one, um, aside from keeping your feet up, is stand up as much as you can throughout the day. Definitely on phone calls. Um, and it's hard to stand and write emails, but you can do little tricks like lifting your feet up when you're writing an email. Another cool little trick is doing the bicycle feet while you write your emails. Um, and again, that's just moving your feet like this while you're on the phone. It will distract you at the beginning. It's very hard to get used to. But if you bicycle feet a couple times in a row when you're talking to friends at home, you can get used to it, you can come to work, and you can do it no problem. Um, doing little tiny, again, if anyone sees you doing this, they're going to look at you strangely. But if you stand up and sit down on the edge of your chair 10 times every couple minutes, just do 10 of those, sit back down, likely no one will see you, and by the end of the day, you might have done 100, you might have done 200 squats, which is what people go to the gym and pay a personal trainer to do anyway. I mean, I've seen so many personal trainers whip the phone out, tell the client to do 200 squats, text all their friends, and when the client's huffing and puffing, they take their $20 and the session's over. So there's so many little tiny hacks like that that we can do. Posture. Postures, we all know it. I, I mean, I'm not a posture expert, but I think that we can all feel when we get a tense call and our shoulders 
tense up as we read something, or when we slouch forward. If you can just use your chair as your guiding force and sit back against it throughout the day, you'll engage your abs in ways that you, you don't know right now. And you might walk away or wake up the next morning with extra tension in your abs just because you were cognizant of the fact that normally you lean forward. So posture's a, 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 an easy one as well. Um, when I talk about doing these <coughs> 10 body weight squats every couple minutes on the edge of your chair, try to time that out. We'll distract you from your work or your work will distract you from trying to time that out and it won't happen. So there's a cool little timer that I use, and this is a productivity tool um, that has helped me a lot, especially, and I know we're all bombarded with everything all day long by our phone, by our emails. There's a timer that's online, it's free, it's called the Pomodoro Timer, and they nicknamed it the Tomato Timer. And again, I'm gonna put a lot of this in an email and send it to Kimberly and she's gonna push it out to everyone. So the Tomato Timer, as I call it, or the Pomodoro Timer, gives you 25 minutes, you hit go, and you close the screen, and it gives you 25 minutes of work. I mean, it doesn't give you that, but it times you for 25 minutes. It beeps, and then it gives you five minutes of rest. So you're supposed to work, and this is what's productivity-wise is shown to be effective with people who are working in the way that all of us work. Now, 25 minutes of work and five minutes of rest, and during that five minutes of rest, you really detach. So if you need a time to look at social media, you do it during your five minutes. Okay, and then you go right back to work and you cut the social media off. I'm just using that as an example, but you cut the social media off and you go back to your 25 minutes. <laughs> After you do three 25 minute sessions and three five minute breaks, you get a 10 minute, you get a 10 minute break. And you can use that timer all day long. It's not something that you need to use, but as far as timing out this whole squat thing or just standing up and sitting down thing, maybe doing a lap of the, of the floor that you're on, um, it's a cool technique. So 25 minutes I work, the timer goes off, it tells me for five minutes, and during those five minutes I'm doing something where I'm standing up and I'm moving around, or I'm walking around the lap. And those little five minutes throughout the day, the amount of productivity, the amount of work that you'll do in the 25 minutes will outmeasure those little five minute spurts that you dedicate to doing something simple like standing up. So check it out. If anything, uh, after this little lunch and learn, check that out when you get back, because I think it's I think it's pretty cool. Um, how many? People's feet are still up. Are your legs burning if your feet are still up? Are you going to no? take a break? Huh? Are you going to take a break? Am no. I going to take a break? Yeah, so we put them. You can put them down now. They're, they're going like this. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it's tough. It's tough. So anyway, um, the other little things that, and this is, this is a little more um, detailed, but there's cool things you can do at your desk with no weight. Um, I call this the pushing palms and the pulling palms. So pushing palms, and this is, let's say you have the timer on. 25 minutes you've worked, the timer goes off, you have five minutes, you stand up, you walk around, you come back to your desk. Pushing palms mean you take both your palms, you push them together, you cup them, and you push together for 10, five to 10 seconds, and you count your head, and you, you really do push. And you'll feel this kind of ripple across your upper body. And then you switch, then you do five to 10 seconds the other way. And you do three rounds of that. Okay, so if you're actually exerting force here, your arms will start to shake a little bit to show you that you're doing it. And this adds up over time throughout the day. So it's not yes. So it's not something that you're gonna feel right away and say, I got a great workout. But at the end of the day, if you've done this ten times, you'll feel like you exerted um, some effort. So pushing palms is overlaying your palms and pushing each way, um, ten seconds each way, five or ten seconds each way, and you do that three rounds. And that will you'll be done that in under five minutes. Pulling palms is the same thing. So you cup your hands like the um, like the linking on a train car and you pull and this you'll feel this across your back. You'll pull for, three to ten, or for five to 10 seconds, and you'll switch, and you'll pull the other way. Again, feeling that in the back. Um, three times? Yeah, I do, so I do, I count to 10. Mm -hmm. I count to 10, mm -hmm. and I switch, and then I do that three times. Okay. Um, the other one is, is obviously very easy. You can just do it in shoulder circles. If you can do a series of small to medium to large forward, and then small to medium to large backwards, you'll wear your shoulders out. I mean, we used to, you can do that in the gym with very strong, fit people, and they will tire out. You know, they will tire out because there's little tiny muscles in there that need work that don't get work. So um, that's really the extent. There's no sense in outlining a ton of these little, you can look at them on YouTube. I mean, if these, if these intrigue you and you'd like more of these, you can find these on YouTube. There's so many people who, you know, put it out there. But those are the ones that I find effective. I love, when I'm on the phone, I stand up, I walk around. It's a habit now. Um, when I'm writing an email, I put my feet up. When I'm in a meeting, I check my posture. And um, have anyone, has anyone seen the research on power poses? Anyone? 
anybody? Okay, cool. Super neat research uh, by my mom's a psychology professor, so I get to I get to eat this stuff up all the time. Uh, power poses, and this, these studies were done um, two or three years ago with young ladies in, in interviews, and there there was data to show that in a variety of job types, young ladies in interviews did more poorly than young men, and afterwards they reported that they didn't feel confident going in there. So the researcher decided to have them go in the bathroom for two minutes before the interview and strike a power pose. So these young ladies would stand in the mirror and stare at themselves like this, with a superwoman pose. And their outcomes, their ref so, and again, these were mock interviews, but the reflection that they had of themselves and that the employer had of them improved and skyrocketed. It's really neat research, so it's called power pose research. So when I talk about posture, there's an underlying current there that you will present yourself as a more capable individual. And I'm not just saying this because it's a group of ladies. As anyone who presents themselves in a, in a power pose in a meeting or before a meeting, things tend to go better for you. It's really cool research. I would invite everyone to check it out. Um, so posture. And then, obviously, the little tiny hacks. These are tiny. I call them little exercise hacks. The pushing and the pulling of the palms um, in the arm circles are neat ways to just give a little workout throughout the day. Um, and that's it. So the only other thing that I thought um, would be kind of cool is to do a Q&A if anyone has any questions. Like, while I'm here, I'm, I've been personal training for four years now, so it's not an incredible breadth of knowledge, but I've been to a couple conferences and constantly tried to read and update myself on what's new and effective. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer them now. And you can spitball any ideas, whether it's nutrition related um, or, or exercise related. If it's gym related with questions, obviously, I'm gonna. I can have my cards, and uh, that has my email and phone number on it. We can actually go into the gym and talk about exercises too. But does anyone have any questions? Just basic exercise things that you've wondered about, or that have kind of popped up, or been obstacles for you? I know it's sometimes touchy subject. If not, then no mission complete. I, I exercise regularly, but I've always had trouble started maintaining strength training types of things. I just don't find them interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like your ideas about things you could do while you're working. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of kinds of exercise that I feel, you know, I can't get motivated to do that. I have a hard time doing mine. I jog every Saturday. I make myself do it. But the, the way that I've worked with my students and getting them engaged in something, because we use the strength training to help them understand that if you can accomplish these challenges, or if you can overcome these challenges in, in fitness, then you can overcome the challenges in, you know, in algebra. Um, and we've we've succeeded with them because we've we call it gamifying. You know, we've used social media and our phones and our computers now have the applications that make us use them so much have been gamified by programmers. So we feel good when we get an email ping and we look at it, and so we go back to our email to check for that ping again. And that's, that's, that's the way this works. So we've tried to replicate that in our gym um, with setting small but achievable goals for them that we, we reward them with immediately. And the reward means encouragement as soon as they accomplish those goals. So I know that's probably the cheesy answer, but if, if we talked about setting goals that were achievable and then goals that were beyond it that kind of leveled up in, a, in an exciting and entertaining way, maybe we could address some of the interest in, in strength training, and it also helps um, if we could build a community around strength training. So if we have a group of people that come together, and you know, when we see each other there, and we motivate each other, we ask each other about progress, um, that helps to keep people hooked in. Um, but short of that, you know, there's also just like I said at the beginning, there's just some things that aren't aren't interesting. And if strength training is not, if strength training, maybe we, maybe I'm saying we redefine what strength training is. If weightlifting is not. Um, of interest, perhaps there are other body weight uh, or or you know band resistance exercises that we could do that would be exciting and new and allow you to do all the things you want to do. So I hope that answers it mm -hmm. in my maybe roundabout way. But I would be happy to to be involved with you and help you know give new ideas or perspectives. We have a number of bands and um, like TRX strap things at the at the CBW building for people who are you know more interested in. It's a different feel when you exercise with bands because it's when the band is not stretched, 
there's no weight. But as the band stretches, it's increasing amounts of weight, and that that can be pretty fun because you can moderate how much. Yeah, I've always had trouble with weights and joint pain, and like from when I even when I was younger. So I don't really like to do weights too yeah. much. We use bands. I, I I do like bands when I have clients who have a joint or recovering actually, um, and that just that's just what happens in the in the PT off the physical therapy offices too. We use bands to get a joint moving and practice range of motion. So there's good ways around it. But when you walk into the gym at CBW building, the things that pop out are the weights. They're the shiny ones. They're you know they're they're there. So it helps to have me there or someone there to help see through that and talk about other options. Thanks for asking. I, hope, I, I wish I had a more concrete, yeah, if you do this, this, and this, it'll work. There's a great way, I, again, conversation I have all the time is strength is measured in a lot of different ways. So I'm not a strong runner, for example. I'm definitely not strong in yoga, but I do do yoga, so. Anybody else, any questions? Cool. Well, I hope that was, it's only 12.30, so I don't know what your guys' schedule is. I, I promised, I told, I told Kimberly that it wouldn't be long. I just, there's no point in me going on rants about background reasons for exercise when these are just the simple little practical things. Everyone says things like park farther away from the office. Everyone says things like take the stairs all the time. Um, and it would work if it's done every day, but those things are kind of tiresome. So I find it easier to just stand up as much as I can um, lift my feet off the ground as much as I can and uh, use my headphones for my phone so that I can have my hands free and I can do little exercises like that. Sometimes um, when I'm sitting in my chair reading an email or in between appointments, I'll, I'll push up like that. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yep, that's great. I do that a lot too because I need to readjust myself on my chair. I kind of, I, you know, I kind of wonder if somebody's passing by. And yeah. And yep. Yep. No, that's a great tactic. It's great. I have. It's. It actually takes. A, that takes a good bit of shoulder strength to be able to do that. So, I mean, to be able to support yourself up on your shoulders, um, a lot of folks struggle with that too. So, kudos to you for being able to do it. Another concern, back, lower back. Yes. She's like, some of the chairs, I don't like to sit. I never sit on the back. Yeah. The back is in the way they scoot. Yes. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying that you line up with your chair, I don't think she's going to do that. Yeah. If you have a chair like this that rocks back and lining up with your chair wouldn't be the right way to go. I have a pretty firm chair um, at my office that I use, so thank you for clarifying that. Um, ab strength, mm -hmm. having a strong core is generally not something that folks think about when they have lower back pain, and that's kind of our job. That's one of our one of the go-to things as a personal trainer. Um, if you have a client with lower back pain, you ask or test abdominal strength and see if they can do um, things like belly breathing, where you take a deep breath in and you have the client hold their you have the client hold their uh, collarbones and you ask them to take a deep breath in, and everyone goes, and you ask them if they can just do a breath into their belly instead, where you you suck the air into your belly, showing that you can control those muscles. Um, and if they can't do that, you can do cool ab exercises that teach, I mean, you can lay on your back and lift your feet up and work on feeling how your abs are activated so that you can eventually learn to breathe into your belly instead of up top, up top and raise your shoulders up. So when we, that would be my go-to first would be to talk to folks about <coughs> ab strength. Or, you know what, um, I don't know if anyone does this here, the, the exercise ball, sitting on the exercise ball. That can be cool. But if you're not careful and if you get tired, then you, your back goes all curvy on the exercise ball too. So, uh, but that's a good way to, you know, kind of stabilize. Yeah, I think it's given all their employees, especially the ones in our building, all exercise balls. That's what they use as their desk chairs. Yep. It can be, you know, it can be, a, it can be good. Yeah. Do you know what else is great? Fourth grade, even Conrad Weiser, fourth grade, got a grant that all the fourth graders have ball chairs. Cool. As well, so that's a watch shower. Yeah. The um, there's cool. I saw some bike desks. Yeah. And those are great. That's what Megan's gonna advocate for in the next yeah. session. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they're cool. Yeah. They actually use them. It, there's really, really, really effective studies that show that kids who have um, learning disorders or struggling in the classroom, 
if you give them a desk that has pedals, or if you give them a desk, and these are my favorite ones, a desk that simply has a swing at the bottom for their feet. They can just swing during the class and they, they can focus and it gives them an avenue. Um, so that's, I, the bike desk is probably more effective. But you know what you can get? Um, you could get, and I don't know, I, I don't, we have one at our gym, I don't know where we got it from, but it's a small, it's just two pedals. And then we put it under the desk and as you're working you can pedal and you can dial up the tension on it. Very, very minimal. But, um, but it is distracting. It's hard, it's hard to, for example, walking on a treadmill, like a treadmill desk, uh, very hard to do and tight. You have to walk or you have to pedal extremely slowly. <laughs> unless, you know, and that, that would be for us, unless anyone here has a, a learning, you know, a, learn, a learning handicap of some sort. If you are high tension all the time and you get on that treadmill desk or that bike desk, then you're learning in a more comfortable way. So for us, sometimes, who don't experience de developmental challenges, it's harder, but for some of the kids, it's the key, it's the success, the key to success, so there's cool stuff. Cool, yeah. Well, thanks for listening to me. I'm, I'm, I'm around, um, I'm gonna grab my cards right now, they're over there, um, but please, if anyone wants to come down to the gym, um, someone in the, so at the, at the basement of the CBW building, the, uh, there's a very nice lady who has an office right across from the gym and she has a key. So if I'm not there and the door's not open, you can call me, and I'm always in Lancaster, so I can just zip over and open it. Or the um, lady down there has a key, and she can let you in. So there's a stereo down there too. Stairs as well. If you come into the 57 Laurel Street yes. parking lot entrance, the Head Start, we have a key upstairs, and we take you down. Perfect. So yeah, I'm excited. I think I think it's gonna um, it's gonna be a time. You know, we'll just kind of everyone will figure out it's there, and we'll get going. Also, um, I did say that we we use it from five to eight o'clock, but you can come down there and work out with us. It's really, really, really fun to work out with the kids. Like they're, it's a, it's a, it's an experience unlike anything else. And the benchmark kids are generally the ones that we read about in the newspaper. Um, we get them before and after they're in the newspaper, and they open up with us in ways that you would not imagine. And they may have tattoos all over their faces and necks and look like they're not the kind of people you'd want to talk to about life, but holy moly, they have the you know most amazing perspectives and they've all experienced trauma in, in ways that affect them. And if you ask them about those things, it's refreshing. It's refreshing for them and in our environment, they feel comfortable. So if anyone wants to come and work out with us at night, that's an open invitation. And we have the other gym on um, East Liberty Street which is, would be free as well, but you know, that one, it's not directly accessible through CAP, but it's there too. Um, I left my cards in a little chair over there, so anyone who wants to snag one on the way out, it's got my email, phone number, I'll just come down. Oh, there's um, waivers too at the gym, but they're on the chair. You can just sign it and slip it under the door. Um, if anyone's interested in this, this is kind of cool. We have young ladies who are prepping for job interviews and stuff, and we've, um, actually collected in, in the CBW gym building in the back, and there used to be an office there. We've turned that into what we call the career closet. So we have women in the community who have donated a ton of gently used but amazing professional clothing, and our young ladies, right before the interview, they go through there, they pick up whatever they want, and then they go to the interview dressed to impress. So that has been a great success for the young ladies. And soon, we as a program are splitting the guys and girls programs off so they can grow <coughs> independently. And the CBW gym at night will be the girl space. So it will be customized to meet whatever needs the girls have. So there might be some equipment changes. We might remove the heavy dumbbells, for example. And then we will have, I don't know, I, we have, we're going through focus groups right now with young ladies to figure out what do you want. What, if there was a gym just for you, what would you want? And so, anyway, so stay tuned. Um, we change all the time. If anyone has any suggestions for our program, we welcome that too. Cool. All right, I'm out of energy. <laughs> I'm very tired. So, thanks for listening. Can Jay show up? Yeah. 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 yeah.